this video, we are going to be breaking down the top 10 epics currently in Infinite Magic Raid. And how we're gonna be doing this is we're gonna go back and forth. We picked five each. We're gonna go back and forth between the ones we think are best. Also keep in mind that there is a lot more than just 10 good epics in this game. There's actually quite a few, like going through the list, I would say maybe even 20, but we're gonna give our top five, the ones we wanna highlight when it comes to this. And me personally, how I like to look at epics is they're great at support. Like that's where they could really shine. And also they're great because you can exclusive them so much way cheaper than legendary heroes. It's almost like unrealistic to even think about exclusiving legendary heroes. So that's one of the main benefits here. You get up more stats, you get more speed, and then you get a lot more effects. So that is the main benefit of supports or epics and mainly they can be support heroes. So that's what I'm looking for. Really good support epics. And so to start off with this, I'm going to go boring. I'm going to go when it, amazing epic. If you really, if you started out when this game went live on the NA servers, then you would have this character guaranteed through the battle pass. But nowadays, not so much. There currently is a rate up banner for him. I believe you pulled like six of them during the the, the pulls there. Yeah, I, so I yeah. counted it was seven at the end that got me a bunch of eggs because that guy, I mean, I already had awakened five, an exclusive five because he's so good. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's crazy. It's pretty sick to, um, you know, be able to pull so many. So definitely don't miss out on this opportunity here. But the uh, reason why he's so good is not only does he have one of the biggest percentage shields here, grand self 40% shield on a four turn cooldown, but then as you can see at exclusive two, Wim gains one more action turn after he releases Warrior's Roar, which means that it's actually a three turn cooldown. And that's really big for being able to make sure you can survive longer. And then he has this, the consolidation one, but I think the real other part that makes him good is the combination of him going twice and then him having this passive here where every ally's HP below and then the trigger gets higher. So it's like 40%, I believe, with 28, 32, yeah, 40% of their HP. If it goes below, it grants them a shield by 20% of max HP when he survives for two turns. So having this out of turn is really big in this game. When it comes to being able to make sure people survive, I like attack downs or moves that don't require a cooldown or don't require a move because that's going to mean people can actually survive a lot more easily. So that I think those are the big things here. And then one last thing, because he goes multiple times, the reason why I like that is because you can put him in recovery horn aura, which is a really good aura. So you get yeah. to actually double dip and use it twice when he's not only shielding, but then he's healing them as well. And so that just to show that off really quick, it's this restore all his HP by anywhere from four to nine percent, depending on how many of the things you actually got into it. So I like that pairing with Wim. Wim is just so, so good. The characters that get extra turns are automatically, wait a second, this guy could potentially be game breaking. And Wim, the support he provides is so insane because literally first turn, you have one of the biggest shields and a 20% damage reduction. One of the only other characters that can do that is Catherine. And mm -hmm. I mean, we already know how good Catherine is. And that's part of the reason why Kim Wim is so good. And honestly, I still use him in 90% of my comps to this day because surviving in this game is, is like horrendously hard. Thank you. A lot of people say to regress him once you get Catherine, and I couldn't disagree more with that, even though yeah. I totally did because I wanted to make content, not because it was an actual smart choice, because I would pair him with Catherine and he works really well with her. The damage is so high in this game, you could either uh, stack the shields and then they'll actually go in pairing because they both have three turn cooldowns if you end up having exclusive three Catherine. And then also what he's really great at doing is covering when Catherine doesn't have a shield, whether it be you going through waves, it's not up yet. Having this other character that's just as good, I mean, yes, Catherine's way better, but it's still very similar and you could kind of overlap there. So you always have a shield because there's so many different mechanics, whether it be they just hit really hard or they actually need a shield to be able, or they'll do extra damage or they'll start ramping up damage. There's a ton of mechanics like that. So having that covered is really nice. Are we moving on to yes. my pick now? Yes. Yeah. Let's oh, go to right. your, right. your first pick. What do you think your first pick is here? So this guy, I was actually extremely impressed because I built him out recently at both Awaken 2 and Awaken 5. And that is Birdo. The big reason why I got so much higher on him, I already thought he was good because you can get that 40% effective potential off of him due to, you know, when you get those exclusives running, he becomes like an absolute monster. Just so, so good at giving you basically bonus stats, which allows you to basically not go for stats on your other characters. We're talking about 44% effect hit if you have that exclusive three on him. And what stood him up even further was the fact that we did the testing on how effect hit actually works in this game. And mm -hmm. now you can increase the chances. And we're talking, you need like 100, 110, 120% effect hit sometimes. That's actually really difficult to acquire. And when you're talking about getting 44% effect hit on him already, that is just so good. And what's cool about it, and this is one of my favorite parts about him, is that he's also offering the attack up two, which is not common. 
yeah. and you don't need him to do damage. So he can be there at Awaken 3, at Awaken 4, and be super, super useful. Because even if he dies, which is exclusive 2, he still applies that effect hit up. So if you already have an attack up 2 like uh, Slavelle in the team or whatever, you can just have the effect hit passively, even if he's dead. Yeah, I'm a big fan of him. I built him out for the Sword Harbor Guard faction, and I really like, mainly I was building up the attack, but then as we discovered with the effect hit, just how good that is, having that extra thing there to really guarantee things are going to land, especially when you have other characters like bleed characters that take so many other stats. He's really clutch. The big thing too is with the attack up is just how much of a difference it increases your nukers. Like I was always surprised by whenever I would attack up to like Zia, for example, I figured she would do more damage, but it feels like it's way more damage than I was expecting in this game. Uh, maybe that's due to like in raid, for example, everyone has Arbiter. You kind of already expect that attack up to as a normal thing in that game, whereas in this game, not necessarily the case. So this is just how it normally is in this game, but it really feels like it's a big jump up in damage when you have this 40% attack up. Yeah, and I noticed it a ton because I actually ran them with Reeves and Lucaya. And when you're talking about bleeders, I mean, your bleeds just start to mm -hmm. absolutely pop off with attack up to you. So 100% agree. So I think that covers Virto here. Let me go with my next pick here. I think this is probably my favorite epic in the game. And I use this character an absolute ton. It's Visley. And I think this character doesn't get talked about enough. I think if there's ever a raid up for her or something like that, just be sure to try to cop this character. Obviously, you're going to need good legendaries to go with that to make it worth it. But this is such a good character. I consistently use her in my dungeon teams uh, to be able to push progression. I've actually replaced space for her because of just how uh, well-rounded she is in a lot of scenarios. And if I were to do it again and I pulled her early, I would probably put her in like campaign teams and stuff like that. Because space a lot of times has the issue of like just going too much. Whereas what I like about her is she actually has a debuff where it doesn't matter. You don't outscale a debuff. If you just go too fast or whatever, they still have to go. So you can always rely on it. And that's why I really like it, especially with guaranteeing it with a lot of effect hit. But she has the attack down to, which just like how an attack up to does a ton, attack down to really makes things a lot more survivable. But then she also has speed down on the auto attack, which is nice. And then she has a speed up for all allies. And it also increases the crit rate by 25% of the ally with the highest attack. So you get actually target that on a three turn cooldown. And then lastly, she has this fantastic uh, passive here where she has a 50% chance to reduce the effect res. So it's like she's doing everything. Like you got the attack down, you got effect res down, you got speed up, you got speed down. So the only thing she's missing, I believe is a turn meter boost, but I think that's really good. Yeah, I uh, agree. The thing that I have found, uh, and I'm sure you found as well, which is why you built this in the first place, mm -hmm. but similar to, since I'm gonna continue with the raid comparison, you're in clan boss, you need an attack down if you wanna go anywhere far with a standard team comp. In this game, that's exactly the same, but not just for guild boss. In fact, not even necessarily for guild boss, for every other piece of content. Gwyneth, Ifrit, Rowan, all the dungeons. If you ever mm -hmm. want to touch stage 28, 29, 30, 31, those types of stages, they start to one-shot you. Faction uh, Abyss, Tower Mark, they start to one-shot you. I don't know how else to describe it. You yeah. need something to reduce that attack because the shields that we have, I can stack Wim Shield plus Catherine Shield plus Consolidation 2, and I still get one-shot. It's just nothing you can do about it except reduce their attack on top of that make you a little bit more survivable so i think just having that debuff alone makes her super super appealing let's move on to the next epic here who do you got for us for the fourth epic Ooh, so this one uh, he's a little bit newer initially i wasn't super high on him but assuming that his you know abilities work correctly i was talking to someone and that's going to be creon because what you can do is he's got that weird stunning mode and then the weird hp burning mode right mm -hmm. i don't care about the stunning mode at all i, I don't like it i, I don't want him to stun it's a low chance it doesn't really do much but him having an aoe hp burn that we can guarantee and an hp burn on basic makes him suddenly a really really good character if you're able to stay in that mode and if you're able to control the skills in the skill menu to make sure that he's not swapping back to that standard you know stunning weird mode he's gonna do so much for you as an hp burner because again he's one of the few characters in the game that has an aoe hp burn and although you know i have hoff and sigmund so i have a lot of aoe hp <laughs> The... some of the only ones in the game uh -huh. if you don't have those characters he is actually someone that you could have used to carry you through early campaign because hp burn is one of the best ways to go through and cut through the waves in time because you need to reach that 100 turn limit but even in dungeons and everywhere else i'm actually i've actually been very impressed with this guy only if you know how to properly tune him with the kind of ai tuning for the waves if not then he's kind of mediocre because he keeps swapping yeah i think you would have to get really creative with those auto things but where he shines is campaign progression and 
when you're manualing. If you're, for example, if you're trying to beat stage 26 or if you're trying to uh, three star it for Catherine, like those are going to be the best times to be using this character because that's going to guarantee you this thing in the end. Then you could start autoing. And I think he's fantastic for that, keeping him in that mode. Also, it says 70%, but you get enough effect hit, it's going to be guaranteed. And then he also gives himself extra mastery if you have him exclusive too, which is nice, especially early on. Every stat counts. And if it's built into the character, you really start to feel it. So super good character for that. And then just the feeling, because like we have some of the best AOE HP burners. Like we have Sigmund, we have Hoff. But when I was doing campaign, I had Melia, but then I also had Sigmund. And I was like, why would I need Sigmund when I already have Melia? But I switched to Sigmund. It made campaign so much easier. And so you can have mm -hmm. a good HP burner, but if they're not an AOE HP burner, it's a massive difference. And so I think that really speaks to just how good AOE HP burn is when you're trying to push yeah. through and beat these things. I can tell everyone from personal experience, I had one of the luckiest starts to an account. I got Melia, followed that up by his Sonya, following that up later on by Sigmund and a bunch of other really good mm -hmm. legendaries like Zia. Um, I mean, it was like the most nutty start I could have possibly had. Mm -hmm. And I was able to three-star campaign way farther for most people. And I was basically completely free to play. I bought the battle pass and that was it. And here I was three-starring campaign while I had like 50 mythic shards. Whereas most people had to wait until they had a hundred mythic shards, got their mythic and it was able to three-star campaign. And that's yep. only because I had Hisanya plus Sigmund plus Melia. Melia was exclusive too for me because I, you know, I got, I pulled a second Melia, okay? We're talking about crazy talk here. Yeah, I yeah. actually got her exclusive and I had three AOE HP burns. Every wave just melted. Uh -huh. It was the easiest it's time hilarious, in, yeah. in the world for me. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, like it your account so was bugged and you can only get like top 20 legendaries or in that case, like <laughs> top five legendaries. So like it's crazy. And so I think all that to say, like just how good AOE HP burn is. It doesn't matter if it's an epic. It doesn't matter if you have to like manage the moves. It's worth dealing with it because it's going to be that good for you. Let's get to number five here on the epic list. So Liz is just insane. And I really like that they did this and then they made it in a part of the game that's never going to change, which I think is cool because before I would recommend if you guys watch my older videos that whim is guaranteed where that is not the case anymore because he was just in the battle pass at one time. Whereas now Liz is in another game, but I can't show it because I've completed it. But that guidebook thing, I believe it's called, and you can get her there. And the main thing that makes her so good is she has the, she has a combination of a few things, but it's really just her ult here, especially when you can start to get more exclusive into her. I think exclusive three is a really big deal because it goes up to a 40% shield. So she kind of covers both the whim and being able to, the big thing here that I keep getting to is the removing of dot debuffs. This is really clutch in making yes. sure people survive because HP burns and poisons and bleeds even you know, when you first start playing the game, they, they always hit hard, but I really noticed it and I really needed this early on when I didn't have Catherine just cleansing everything for me and she was a big deal in being able to prevent that from happening. Yeah, uh, she's also a secret hidden like bank mega boss in arena early on in the mm -hmm. game because of her HP burn immunity turning it into heals. But as you're saying, what's interesting about her is if you compare her to Wim, like let's just compare, as you mentioned earlier, they both have the shield. Wim gets the extra turn into consolidation, whereas Liz cleanses and also heals. And the heal is not like negligible, right? We're talking about a 13% mm -hmm. max HP heal, which is pretty solid. And she's almost always cleansing debuffs. As far as I've seen, you know, when you get to those stages in campaign, like chapter 11, for example, when you're fighting Achmans, when you're fighting other Liz's, when you're fighting Monchkas, those guys that are just applying a ton of HP burns and burns to you, you absolutely need a Liz. I don't know how I would have beaten it without someone like Liz uh, mm -hmm. because of that debuff cleansing. And this, you know, continues on throughout the game. So many areas where there's just like random bleeds that are one-shotting me because I didn't get the cleanse, which is another reason why Catherine's good. And just to go to show you, Liz is pretty good for the same reason. Cleansing mm -hmm. is so important in this game. Yeah, she's awesome. Here's our top five here. We're going to actually finish out the rest of the top 10 on Veiled Shots channel here. So be sure to check that out. It's going to be linked right here.